What is a fishing addict? So in today's video, we will be talking about the top baits that you can use on the winter to catch those donkeys. So most recently, I've been patiently fishing winter. Um, so this, uh, these lures are mainly for the Midwest. Well, they work anywhere in the nation, but uh, especially a lot of guys make uh, videos for cold winter fishing, but they're located in far south as Florida and let's face it their winter baits are totally different than ours right now uh, most of their bass are in pre-spawn our bass are freezing their little tenties so temperatures we're talking about temperatures below 50 degrees 45 degrees and and right before well we take right before 40 uh, 40 and below uh, but most successful baits that I have used so far are uh, a jig, basically a uh, do-nothing jig. Absolutely uh, very little action or the action itself is implied just by dead sticking it. So um, hair jigs, anything with hair is uh, pretty good in the winter. Um, cross style baits work great. Um, but uh, marabou or hair hair jigs are absolutely deadly because uh, this thing sinks like a rock and then the secondary action with the even very little water uh, very very little uh, current and uh, wind current the feathers will move as you so you guys saw uh, most recent video that uh, you guys watched uh, I was using a hair jig and I had a pretty successful day. Hair jigs are one of my becoming one of my favorite. Um, I'm still not a uh, hundred percent tuned into them, but uh, I do see the potential of them. And a lot of walleye guys, I learned this from a lot of walleye guys uh, that um, use uh, hair jigs uh, because of the secondary action. These feathers will puff out when when it's on the ground. And they'll move and they'll attract the fish and you don't even have to do anything all you have to do is sit patiently and let that uh, small mouth or large mouth creep up to it and they'll just suck it in as soon as you move it also uh, usually this time of the year you're fishing a little bit of deeper water you guys have to keep in mind when you're fishing um, usually I'll fish uh, six feet all the way to 14 feet depending on the lake once you break that surface three to four feet uh, on top uh, surface water the temperature drastically increases so you might have surface temperature of 34 degrees but once you drop a couple of feet down and that temperature rises um, so um, most recently I would say not most recently but uh, about two and a half two years ago in winter uh we went out fishing to a deep lake and um buddy, buddy of mine brought his uh, little uh uh aquarium temperature thing so we tied it on shipped it down uh, about 20 22 feet and the water temperature was whopping 44 degrees um so that's a pretty comfortable temperature for a bass uh, to be honest uh, that's the that's the temperature we start fishing for. That's the surface temperature we start fishing for them for pre-spawn. So having a jig with a paddle tail or a little flasher on the back, slow rolling it to eight to ten feet of water on that submerged grass, especially when you find submerged green grass, that's where the fish are. And uh, you can always uh, pick up a couple of them just with the swim jig rolling it down through the grass slowly uh, letting that paddle tail kick slowly or have a little flasher on the back uh, uh, breaking some uh, some light in there flashing catching the eye of the fish and the top two deadliest uh, one of them that will be a blade bait especially for small mouth this is a killer bait it does have a ton of vibration and I just I have no idea about why it catches them it just catches them like crazy and then we have a jerk bait 
I like using a little bit of deeper diving jerk baits, anywhere between uh, six to ten feet of water. And most importantly, I do not use a floating or suspending jerk baits. I like to use slow sinking jerk baits. Um, this one is a, a slow sinker, and I like I like during the winter I like going with natural colors. I don't know why, but natural colors for me have always been producing fish like no other um some people go crazy with their colors i always like to stick to my natural colors or my browns or my uh, uh whites and sometimes green uh greens but um i don't vary from my four colors it's gonna be black and blue uh some type of green some type of brown and white and i can never go wrong with these colors i don't mess with anything pink whatever uh or a banana split or whatever that uh, nowadays people are uh, um, pushing in the market but uh, a jerk bait it is one of my favorites uh i have always loved the jerk bait uh most a uh, couple years back i had a uh, little bit of disagreement with uh trouble hooks but uh for the most part my fear of trouble hooks it is over but it's still there um there was a point of my life that I had to remove uh, trouble hooks uh, multiple times every time I went out fishing. I was big into crankbaits, topwaters, and whatnot. And uh, last year I was a a, a crank uh, a bass that spit up a crankbait and uh, smashed me in the money maker. So uh, removing a trouble, pushing a, a trouble hook through your lip that is painful as it gets. Um, I had it on my face, not a big deal, but the lip part, it is very painful. So um, I developed a little bit of phobia of trouble hooks. I did not quit fishing though. However, I, uh, I see it as a blessing. That way I put down, I start use, I picked up more on uh, jig use and single hook stuff. And um, I expanded my game. I believe I, be, I became a better fisherman because I dropped out, uh, I dropped using crankbaits because that was my go-to bait and uh um it worked out everything worked out pretty well and this bait a lot of people will probably overlook it um uh, during uh, uh winter months because it's uh fast moving right but you have to understand if the fish are eating they're eating they will chase a bait they will strike a bait it does, you don't have to put it right in front of them always. I know a lot of people say, oh, you have to put it right in front of them. They can't help themselves. Well, yeah, of course, if you put the bait right in front of them, they'll eat it. But the what it takes skill is you have to bring the fish to your lure. A lot of people say, oh, if you put it right in front of them, they can resist it. Well, yeah, if you put a cheeseburger in front of me i'm gonna eat it no matter how full i am or if i'm full you put a uh some kind of dessert in front of me i'll smash it but when you're hungry you go you leave your house go to mcdonald's go to some kind of food store and you grab food right or uh, you're walking and you're and uh, you smell the food and now uh, you're in the in the mall looking where the food is right it got your attention so that brings out to the spinner bait. The spinner bait is also absolutely deadly in the winter when used right. So cast it and dead slow retrieves. And those baits will still have a lot of flash. They'll put up of enough, they will put up a vibration, but you want to put up a very subtle vibration and when you're burning it when you're in the summer you're cranking that thing uh, but in winter or colder waters like spring a lot of people use use it in spring but you know what the temperature is not that much of a difference between open and cold water just the surface temperature that uh, freezes so fishing this in uh, 8 to 14 feet of water it is absolutely one of the deadliest However, uh, spinner baits tend to rise uh, for the most part when you start uh, retrieving them a little bit faster. But this is why you can go with the jig and you can add a blade on, on the back 
that way a flash jig will run on that uh, lower water column a little bit longer than a spinner bait will so the spinner bait usually will start to rise up as soon as you start the retrieving it it won't stay down and i really don't want to use anything over half ounce i know a lot of people like to use these uh big spinner baits but when you're you, when you're using a heavy lure and you keep on casting and you chugging it down down uh 20 miles to the shore or 20 miles to the deeper edge and you're retrieving it feels like you're you 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 got moby dick on the other line and you just like cranking down that sucker important for me is max that i'll go actually it's half ounce spinner bait and this just happens to be z-man i do like their uh, uh spinner baits they are uh on the better better side uh just the only thing i i, I don't like is how big the blades are um, on this model, I usually like um, using a little bit uh, skinnier blades. That way, it doesn't have that much resistance, and it does have that uh, subtle uh, vibration that puts out. And uh, other than that, these baits run true. A lot of spinner baits, uh, even some big brands, when you cast it and you're retrieving it, they'll tell you, "Oh, you gotta tweak the this, tweak that to make it run straight," or they run sideways um that's why i don't use all striking lures um i had bad experience with uh some of the strikings running sideways on me uh, but they do make uh, amazing spinner baits not just oh, there's a couple of different uh models of striking and i believe i had a bad one um i forgot which model was running funky but uh anyways spinner bait it is one of the deadliest ones as well if you if you use it the right way um once more a jerk bait it is deadly because it imitates a dying shad and at that, at that time they are focused on easy meals they don't want to chase shad they don't want to do anything they see an injured bait fish and they attack it they strike it same thing with jigs on the bottom um with uh, do nothing jigs, the secondary action that's where it gets the fish going. It is very important to match uh, the forage. Uh, I, 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 at winter time, I very rarely will throw uh, a crayfish. I'm usually sticking to my uh, my uh, shad patterns, my minnow patterns, or some kind of bait fish because. Um, let's face it, in winter, there is no crayfish. They're all hidden up in their burrows for the most part, and they're not coming out. They're uh, hibernating, but bait fish are all around, and most of the time, they are dying, and that's why bass like to feed on them. So offer them a known meal, what the bass is looking for. And once after ice melts and the temperature start rising on there, that 45 and above, that's when I'll, I'll start using cray, crayfish pattern because that's when the uh, crayfish are coming out of their burrows, um, spawning or whatever, and bass are on them for that high protein diet. But as for winter, cold water can go wrong with these baits, guys. Jerk bait, blade bait, the blade bait is a staple on cold water. It is amazing. And don't snooze on jigs or uh, spinner baits and also most recently um, hair jig is becoming my favorite um, it's a very subtle presentation and most of the time is you cast it and just like a jerk bait requires a lot of patience so just patient cast work it slowly drag it on the bottom small hops figure out the cadence that's it guys i'll catch you guys on the next one